Bauer Iman. And I want you to think about this. The pillars of Iman are six, as we know, and Ramadan has a direct and very special and unique relationship with each one of the pillars of Iman. We start off with Al-Iman Billah, fast Ramadan with Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, discovering your Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the famous hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, all of the good deeds of the son of Adam are for him, except for fasting. As-sawmu li wa ana azzibi. Fasting is for me and I reward accordingly. Meaning what? With every single other action that you do, there is some element of interaction with other people, right? So for example, salah, people are going to see you at, at the very least in your congregational salah. With zakah, okay, at the very least, the person who's going to receive your zakah or the collector is going to know that you've given that zakah. When you look at your hajj, there are going to be millions of people that are going to see you in hajj. When you take your shahada, you're obviously going to take it in the presence of at least two witnesses and usually in front of a large congregation. But siyam is something that is purely between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a, a mandatory element of ikhlas and it's very practice. And, you know, if you think about this, right, because... Uh, you know, although you could be fasting in the sight of people, who knows, maybe when you go home you sneak into the closet and you eat, and co- you eat a cookie, alright, it's a problem if you have cookies in your closet in the first place, but anyway, you know, you might be doing something that negates your sliyam when people are not looking at you, so there's a very special ikhlas there, a very special sincerity there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is, this is between me and my servants, this action in particular is between me and my servants, because no one else is aware about whether or not that servant is purely fulfilling the obligation of siyam. Also, we know that when it comes to siyam, when it comes to fasting, Rasulullah Sallallahu informed us that for the fasting person there are two pleasures. The first one is when he breaks that fast and he feels really good about it, obviously. I mean, subhanAllah, you know, that sip of water never tasted so good. That bag of chips never tasted so good. I know some people break their fast on that. Dates never tasted so good. Harim, adas, whatever it is that, you, that you're eating. You might be getting hungry now, so I'm going to stop there. But the point is, is that, you know, it, 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 it feels really good when you break your fast. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, the greater pleasure is when you meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when it's between you and your Lord, and when you get that reward. So make sure that you're fasting with Iman in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then we look at Al-Iman Bil-Malaika, belief in the angels. And this is the month where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants us to pay most attention to our Malaika, to the angels. Why? Because if you look at Surah Qaf, we find something very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the second page of Surah Al-Qaf uses the same word twice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Qareen twice. Qareen means someone that is so close to you, it's as if they're tied to you. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu anhu, whenever they were being tortured by Nawfal, they were tied together in the early days of Islam, and they were called al qarinain the two Qareens, because they were tied together, literally, when they were being tortured. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean when He uses the word Qareen? Now the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word Qareen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيد. And His Qareen said, this is what I have to present. This is what I have to present. Then just a few ayat later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ His Qareen said, Oh my Lord, I wasn't the one who led him astray, but he was in pure error. He was in far error, distant error from you, O oh Allah. So, subhanAllah, this word is being used twice, but it's referring to opposite entities. On one hand, the Qareen that is presenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the angel. And the Qareen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about just a few ayat later, who says, I was not the one that led him astray, that's none other than shaytan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does us a huge favor in Ramadan, because as we know, in Ramadan, sufidatul shayateen, the shayateen are locked up. So one Qareen is gone, so you need to worry about the other Qareen now. You need to worry about the other Qareen and focus on the deeds that you are putting on that record. What is the angel reporting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And subhanAllah, this is where we're most conscious of it, right? We start to watch our language more. We start to watch you know, our deeds more in Ramadan. And in essence, you think to yourself, you know, all these deeds that I'm doing now, 
Do I really want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these deeds? Do I really want to meet Allah with that word that I just spoke? Do I really want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that sin? So you're watching yourself attentively. And the angels also, this is the night where they come in the, in, in the billions and trillions constricting this earth, constricting the heavens and the earth making du'a for every servant that is observing Laylatul Qadr. So you're engaging very closely the angels in a very unique way. So fast Ramadan with Iman and Al-Malaika. Then Al-Iman bil Kutub, belief in the books. And subhanAllah, this is Shahrul Qur'an. This is the month of Qur'an. The first way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the month of Ramadan, Shahrul Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. This is the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed. And in fact, every single book was revealed in Ramadan. So you're not just engaging uh, the Qur'an, you're actually engaging all of the kutub, because all of the books, because all of them were revealed in Ramadan, as we know in the hadith from Ibn Hibban and Al-Tabarani and Ahmad, with different narrations. But still, when we collect them together, the Prophet ﷺ informed us that the suhuf of Ibrahim, the tablets of Ibrahim السلام, were revealed on the third day of Ramadan. And then the Torah was revealed on the sixth day of Ramadan. And then the Injil was revealed on the thirteenth day of Ramadan. And then the Zabur of Dawood was revealed on the eighteenth of Ramadan. And then the Quran was revealed on the twenty-fourth of Ramadan, meaning the twenty-fifth night, which by the way, already you know, makes you start thinking about the whole 27th night thing, was revealed on the 25th night, and this is authentically narrated. So this month is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always chose to send down His books in this month. And in particular, this is the month of Qur'an for the believer. This is the month where you need to have a strong relationship with the Qur'an. As Qatada rahimahullah, he used to read the Qur'an uh, once every seven days. When Ramadan came... He would read it three times a week, and then whenever the last ten nights, and then whenever the last ten nights came, he would read it once a day. So people always kicked it into overdrive because Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came to the Prophet sallam, in Ramadan, he finished the Quran with him twice. So this is the month where you need to read Quran more in your everyday life. You need to make sure that you are that you're studying the Quran. You need to also make sure that you're attending the Taraweeh and you're enjoying the recitation of the Quran. But this month is defined by the Quran. So you're engaging in Ramadan Al Imanu Bil Kutub, belief in the books. Then we know Al Imanu bil Rusul, belief in the messengers. Al Imam al Qayyim Rahimahullah he tells us that not a single messenger of God of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever was not, or every single messenger rather, was mandated with fasting. Every single one of the messengers of Allah was commanded to fast. In particular, notice in Ramadan, how are you engaging your iman in the Prophet wasallam? Look at all of the ways that we are careful to adopt the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam in Ramadan. We're trying to become more like him. We make sure that we do our suhoor just to follow his example wasallam. When we break our fast, how do we break our fast? We, tr- we try to break it with dates, and we try to see how many dates the Prophet ﷺ ate. What kind of dates did the Prophet ﷺ eat when he broke his fast? Right? If the dates were not available, then what did he do? What did he do? You know, we try to make sure we follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ as much as possible in Ramadan. So naturally, in Ramadan, one of the goals is to, bec- is to become more like him ﷺ. So you're engaging al iman al rusul and you're engaging al iman al akhirah belief in the hereafter like no other time إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانْ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ When Ramadan comes, the gates of paradise are opened and the gates of hellfire are shut. So the believer feels like he is between al-jannah and nar and he's trying to make sure that he gains redemption from hellfire and that he enters into paradise. You fast with the belief in an akhirah with the belief that you will be rewarded in the akhirah on a day that the Prophet ﷺ said that the reward of the fasting person is that his face will be removed from the hellfire, the distance of a journey of 70 years for each and every single siyab. This is a, this is a month that is, that is very different from any other month. And subhanAllah, this is the month of redemption. When you're thinking of the akhirah, you want to gain protection in the akhirah. And you know, subhanAllah, we, we hear often this hadith, it's a weak hadith, that the first 10 days of Ramadan are mercy, that the second 10 days are forgiveness, 
that the third ten days are being freed from hellfire. It's actually a weak hadith. Um, and subhanAllah, there is more mercy in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because in the hadith of Abu Umama and Ahmad and also from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna lillahi fi kulli yawmin wa layla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has on every single day and every single night of Ramadan, utaqa, people that he redeems from hellfire. You don't have to wait till the last ten nights. One day of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees your sincerity and Allah decides to free you from the hellfire. SubhanAllah, Allah decides to redeem you. And as in the narration of Abu Sa'id, and for every single day, the Muslim, every single day and night, the Muslim has a dua that is mustajab, an accepted dua. And this is an authentic hadith. So subhanAllah, you know, we don't even have, we don't even wait to engage you know, the belief in hellfire until the last 10 days, but we think every single day, remembering the Akhirah, was this the day, was this the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to redeem me and free me from the hellfire? Was this the day that I was written amongst those who would enter paradise without any form of adab, without any form of punishment, without any form of accountability? What more do you want, subhanAllah? So engage your iman in al-Akhirah, engage your belief in the hereafter, in a way that you would that you would not do so throughout the year in, in Ramadan. You know, make sure that your siyam has that component. And then an iman bil qadr, belief in divine decree. And subhanAllah it's it's very simple. This month has in it a night that we are all very aware of, which is called Laylatul Qadr, the night of divine decree. The night in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever is forbidden from its good, فَقَدْ حُرِمْ Then truly he is a person that is deprived, whoever is deprived of its good. The night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angels down in the trillions. The night that if a person catches and observes that night, Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, then it is better than a lifetime of worship. The night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree all of our deeds for the next year. All of our deeds for the next year. And we believe that to the point that Ibn Abbas anhu said the names of the people that are going to Hajj for that year, the names of the Hajjaj would be written down, transferred from al Mahfud, and written down in the records of the angels. What better way do you want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night that you're, the next year's worth of deeds is going to be decreed than standing up in Qiyamul Layl and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you engage in Ramadan, your belief in Al-Qadr. What other act in Islam do you engage your Iman the way that you engage the, the way that you engage it in Ramadan? So subhanAllah, that's the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Man sama Ramadan, Iman wa ihtisab. The second thing, ihtisab, seeking the reward. And in essence, this is one of the most crucial things that you can do in Ramadan, is to make sure that you see everything as an opportunity, because this is the month in which everything is multiplied. Right? كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He gives us the purpose of Ramadan, He says, Siyam was written upon you the way it was written upon those who came before you, so that you could gain taqwa, so that you could be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Him. And Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu explained this to us like a man who's walking on a path where there are many thorns and he's making sure that he doesn't get pricked by any of those thorny bushes. Meaning what? He's aware. He's aware. He's seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he's not going to let anything poke him from any side. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us taqwa in Surah Ali Imran. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And rush to the forgiveness of your Lord. سَارِعُوا Rush to the forgiveness of your Lord. And to a jannah, to a paradise that is as vast as the heavens and the earth and it's been promised for who? المتقين, the people of taqwa. Then Allah describes them. And you can find the perfect correlation from المتقين and taqwa and الاحتساب. الذين ينفقون في السراء those who give in both hard times, in times of hardship and in times of ease. Right? Now, usually they would restrain themselves from giving too much sadaqah because they're worried, they're afraid. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to restrain ourselves from our own sense of greed, to trust Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, so to give in both hardship and in ease. 
And this is the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was described by Ibn Abbas and by Aisha radiallahu anhuma as, you know, he's always generous sallallahu alayhi wa You can never look at a day in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and not find an act of generosity. But in Ramadan, he was more generous than a blowing wind, than a rih, you know, than a blowing wind. And what is the meaning of that? You know, you know, subhanAllah, like a hurricane, like a tornado, you know, it's indiscriminate, subhanAllah. His salaqah is just going everywhere. It's benefiting people all around him. It's just coming out of him almost in a violent way, subhanAllah, the way that sadaqah is being transferred from the Prophet ﷺ to those that are in need. So we learn in this month, taqwa, restraints from the things that would harm us. And is there a relationship between taqwa and sadaqah and ihtisat in this one in this one, you know, portion of the ayah, what is the relationship between these three things? Well, the first one, the Prophet ﷺ tells us in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, اِتَّقُوا nar, You know, protect yourselves, be fearful of the fire, even if it is by half a date. So taqwa would lead you to give, would lead you to give, because you fear your sins. You fear your sins. You fear what they might do to you. So you give, hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that as a ransom for your sins. And so how is this related to Ramadan? Of course, we just see it here with taqwa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning to us a sadaqah here. Allah is mentioning to us the benefit, al-ihtisab. You're seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. Right? You're seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of that sadaqah. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ And those who swallow their anger. وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ And pardon people. What is the relationship between taqwa and ihtisab here? Think about this. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi tells us in the authentic narration of Al-Hakim and in other places that if someone comes to you while you're fasting and he is foul with you or he tries to argue with you or pick a fight with you, فَلْيَقُلْ inni صَعْمُ Say, I'm fasting. Meaning what? I am looking at that person directly as a form of good deeds. You know, this is my best friend at the moment, this guy that's coming to me and insulting me. He's being arrogant with me. This is my best friend because this person is allowing me to be elevated in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see him like money, but in the, in the sense of good deeds. When someone insults you and actually comes and argues with you and tries to pick a fight with you in Ramadan, not only do you hold yourself out of your taqwa, but Rasulullah is saying, احتسب, seek the reward of it. So you're saying to yourself, Alhamdulillah, this guy is coming and arguing with me in Ramadan and I have a chance, oh Allah, to restrain my anger from him in hopes that you will restrain your anger from me. You see, subhanAllah, you're seeking reward in everything. You're seeking reward in everything because you fear your sins and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Prophet tells us in the authentic hadith in At-Tirmidhi that whoever provides iftar to a fasting person, provides iftar to a fasting person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the same reward without decreasing from the reward of the fasting person himself. So ihtisab, when you're at Ramadan, when you're at your ikhtar, you're thinking to yourself, this is a time for increasing. You know, this is a time for getting more good deeds. So what do you do? You don't wait for someone to come bring you the dates. You go and you take the dates and you try to serve other people to try to get the reward of their fasting too. You're thinking money, but in the ajr sense, in the sense of good deeds. Ihtisab. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mandates us in this month in many different you know narrations to read the Quran to seek to seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time not just the Quran aspect of that but al hafina an nas to pardon people to reconcile with people. Right? And Ramadan is a beautiful you know opportunity for us to reconcile with people through iftar, through seeing them in the masjid. And the last thing you want to do if you are truly aware and awake through taqwa and trying to seek the reward of your Ramadan, is to have your entire Ramadan rejected because you have, you know, you have a grudge against somebody and you're not talking to somebody. And the Prophet ﷺ, of course, informs us that, um, that whenever the good deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees two people that are, that are quarreling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنظِرُوا هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحَا Leave these two until they reconcile with one another. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to see the deeds of that person unless he reconciles with his brother. So this is your opportunity to go and to reconcile seeking the reward. Oh Allah, I'm pardoning this person so that you will pardon me. So that you will pardon me. The relationship between, between taqwa 
and an ihtisab is unbreakable. Subhanallah. So think about it in this Ramadan. This is your opportunity to be forgiven for everything that you've done. This is your opportunity to, to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to start learning to seek the reward in everything around you. And as the Prophet ﷺ tells us, لَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have any, any need for a person's fasting if he does not, if he does not do away with false, with false speech, with foul speech, and with lying, and with all of those other things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need to fast Ramadan with iman and with ihtisab. And at the end of the day, just recognize the opportunity here. You know, and with, with great opportunity, you know, subhanAllah, you also have the downside of that, that if you fail to take advantage of that great opportunity, then what a failure you will be. And that's why when, when Rasulullah was seen by the companions saying, Ameen, 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 three times, and they asked him what he was saying Ameen for, and he said, Jibreel alayhi salam was making dua. And he was making dua against three people, Razima Anfu, wa Khaba wa Khasr, in different narrations. You know, may he be humiliated. His nose is in the ground, you know, subhanAllah, because of how humiliated he is. And what a failure and a loser he is, the one whom Ramadan comes upon him. And he still fails to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Ramadan. Ihtasib. Seek the reward of this Ramadan. Make sure that you're becoming aware in this Ramadan. Iman and ihtisab. And I leave you with one story. And I know I told this story before at Ikna, so if you've heard it, then فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ But it's very powerful just so we recognize the opportunity here. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدْمَ مِنْ دَنْبِ To be forgiven for all of our sins and to truly be elevated in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a hadith that's narrated, an authentic hadith in a sister of Sahihah from Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu who says that I saw a dream about myself. You know, I was in this dream and I had with me two companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and these two Sahaba, both of them had become Muslim on the same day. One of them passed away a year before the other. But the other one also passed away. I mean, he's already dead. One of them passed away exactly a year before the other. And the one who passed away a year before the other died shaheed. Okay, he died a martyr. And he was more known for his good deeds. They were both great companions. But the one that died first was more pious, at least in the eyes of the people, than the second one. He had more actions, more good deeds, at least to the public eye. So he said, I'm standing with these two Sahaba, and the, 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 nad, the Munadi, the caller calls. And who does he call to Jannah first? He calls the one who died second. You know, not the one who died first, who was Shaheed. He called the one who died second first to Al Jannah. So he went and he entered. Then the caller called the other Sahabi, and he answered into Jannah. Then when he called me, he told me, go back for it is not yet your time. Now this is a good dream for him, because this means he's ultimately going to Jannah. And we know, Talha ibn Ubaidullah anhu is from Al-Asr al-Mubashirin, he's from the Ten Promised Paradise. So Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes to the Prophet ﷺ the next day in the Companions, and the Prophet ﷺ used to ask every morning, he used to say, who amongst you saw a good dream? that you can share with us all, right? And the Sahaba used to try to have good dreams because they wanted to share. Like Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, famous narration where he wanted to have a good dream so he could share with the Prophet sallam, and the dream did, turned out not to be so good, but that's another topic. So Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he comes and he shares this dream with the Prophet sallam and the companions, and the companions, you know, they're shocked, they're surprised. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to them, you know, what are you surprised from? And they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the guy that, that got called to Jannah second, died shaheed, he died a martyr. And he was better, I mean, he had more good deeds than the person who died second, than the person who died after him and who was called to Jannah first. And the Prophet ﷺ listened to his answer so he can recognize the opportunity of Ramadan. He said, Alaysa hadha. قَدْ مَكَثَ بَعْدَ هَذَا سَنَةً He said, didn't the one who died second, didn't he live an entire year after the other one? So they said, نَعَمْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Yes, O Messenger of Allah. And look at what the Prophet says. And this should be, subhanAllah, like, like, like candy for a baby. SubhanAllah, not taking candy from a baby. I mean, it's just sweet. Listen to what the Prophet says. Oh Allah, allow us to, to witness Ramadan. 
He says, وَأَدْرَكَ Ramadan, And he caught another Ramadan. And he fasted such and such and prayed such and such. And they said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا أَبْعَدُ مِنَّا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allahu Akbar. Then what is between them is greater than the distance between the heavens and the earth. Now someone might look at that and might say, man, you know, he just insulted the shuhada. No, the hadith is the hadith is sahih. The hadith is authentic. I didn't insult anybody. And the Prophet ﷺ did not insult the martyrs. And this does not decrease from the reward of the martyrs. This just shows you that if you make the most out of your Ramadan with good iman and ihtisab, you could actually surpass a martyr. Think about that. SubhanAllah. So inshallah ta'ala, I ask you, dear brothers and sisters, to make the most of this Ramadan, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow both you and I, inshallah, to make the absolute most of this Ramadan, to fast it with absolute iman, with absolute ihtisab, and to achieve the goal of taqwa, as a result of this Ramadan and to be forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of our previous sins. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan to all of you. I, would, I just wanted to um, actually mention that inshallah ta'ala on August 7th, I'm actually going to be having a class on Laylatul Qadr. A class on Laylatul Qadr that will be either the 19th or the 20th night of Ramadan inshallah. And that will be with the Islamic Learning Foundation, ILF Texas. So you can... Follow us either on Facebook or you can actually go to the website ilftexas.org inshallah for more information. And inshallah ta'ala, I hope to see you all there. It will be a free class inshallah. We'll spend an hour and a half talking about Laylatul Qadr. So it will be a good warm up for us right before the 10 nights bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Jazakumullah khayran again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.